Hi, I'm Dana Durford, also known as the Nuclear Proctologist. Today's date is, oh, it's the 13th of August. I got an echo in my ear, so why even bother? We are launching an expedition. We are launching, I better turn it down because you'll hear it out there. We are launching an expedition to go to the north coast to look for the life you see behind me that is missing. And today we have troubling, startling, absolutely dire, dire news from Tofino on the west coast of Vancouver Island, where nine million people would go every year to take the pictures of what you see here right at the wharf and is now missing. This is a community of around 1,100 people. And that's what they do every summer there's around 9 million people come through their community imagine if you're a community of 1100 people 9 million people crash your party for a couple of months but they're good natured and they everything is set up to accommodate that and move them through it's pretty devastating to see the whole industry disappear on you and then as such of course people have nothing to return to now when you look at that right across the entire spectrum of British Columbia it seems surreal that that could be a possibility. Well, we covered approximately 200, a little bit more, a little bit less. And we just done something simple where we went looking to see if there's anything obvious. And there was four species. Two of the species, uh, three of them, sticks to the rocks as a habit, as a lifestyle, which is two algae, two kelps. And then one species was a mussel. And so the only species that we seen were three that were glued to the rock. And then the fourth one was a purple sea or, or starfish. And what was missing from the equation was everything else, like the snails, like the whelks, particularly and most startling, the sea anemones. All the sponges were missing, the squirts, and even up in the high tide line, everything is missing. None of the indigenous insects you find were there. There was no kelp forest. And probably the most significant, I think, is the limpets. They usually dominate everything along with the snails, right? We didn't see any hermit crabs in any of the tide pools that we checked. We didn't see any clintons. And most... Unusual, we didn't see the infamous, just a single species, there's, there's around 70 species of sea enemies. And they dominate every bay, every harbor, every rock, particularly a low tide. That's what you see these sacks. And you can see them underwater at that, like that at any wharf. If you sink a boat, they would normally cover the boat. That'd be the first thing that latches onto anything including wharfs and stuff like that are permanent. And at low tide you would see these, particularly when you have super moons, which don't mean that much. It just means it's a really low tide. It's 31,000 kilometers closer to Earth is what the moon is, and the moon creates the tide. And so tonight, good night everybody. I just want to walk through that. And at the same time, early in the video, we're going to put up some of my information so people can get there right away when they come back and find it. That was my mailing address and my telephone number. That's my bank account number for people who's going to donate that way. Because a lot of people do like going into the bank, right? And then the other one is you go over to uh, the nuclearproctologist.org. And hang on, folks. And we got a quite a, a, a different type of show tonight for you. And you hit the donate button. And it'll show up. Now that'll take, I believe, MasterCard. So you say you click $10, you go continue. And then you put your name in. I don't see that. I see whatever handle you give me. And all that information goes into the corporations that this is all legit. It's got nothing to do with me. I'm dealing with a, with a really popular uh, like Squarespace for a website. And they have unlimited bandwidth with the package I have. See? And so I can handle 15 million people and everything else. And then they have another company separate and because they sell the, the, the addresses, internet, names, domains. 
and they have another, and there's another company they're hooked up with does the banking, and they'll take uh, Mastercard, they'll take Discovery, they'll take all the major credit cards, and so right now that's all I can pull off for ways for people to send me money is my address. Let me come back to this one, and get off that page, or hang on a second, I'll jump over, and this is Vancouver Island. And Tofino, that's the open ocean right here. And where's Tofino? Um, well, there's Nuka Union. I'm lost. Down here. There's your kill it. And so Tofino's right up there. Oh, I smurfed it up. Hang on, folks. Mom, Peter, you can do better than that for Dana. Tofino, you kill it airport. Tofino's in here. See that island group? Right? And so it's 5,000 miles out to the ocean. Who knows what I was going to say there, because I can't, you can't see me anyway. But it's 5,000 miles out to the ocean. And so the ocean comes in and breaks up in all these islands and estuaries and comes into Tofino, right? And so that's why Tofino had 9 million tourists a year, because it was right on the open coastline. And so this is really friggin' bad news. It doesn't get any worse than that. They have the same thing. And the guy who made the video, John... There's a link below the video, my video here. Uh, very eloquent, uh, heartbroken, you can hear it. It's hard for me to watch it. I watched it 10 times. I don't wanna stop watching it. I don't want another video to show up, but I wish everybody would go down to every beach with their cameras at low tide tomorrow morning or whenever, whatever time it occur. Just type in the name of your community in tide charts and the one with the L on it, right, will be low. And you'll see one in the daylight, one in the dark. Well, the one in the daylight should be, you'll be able to walk down and snap a picture and Twitter it to Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and ask them what kind of rock it is. Right? Twitter it to Jay Cullen and ask him what kind of rocks are these. And he'll say, well, I'm a marine chemist. He says, yeah, I know, but there's no marine stuff left. So we're kind of figure out, have a bit of fun and figure out, you know, I'm just making up shit at this stage. But, but do you get where I'm coming from? Now Vancouver Island is 460 kilometers. I'm gonna do. We're gonna do this in the zodiac, and we're we're gonna go all the way up. We're gonna do the top of the Charlottes. This is a whole lot of going, folks. Trust me. This is where I got injured, right there. That island, right there. Somewhere along here, we were diving after 128 days, and I got screwed for life and we're going back unfortunately and unfortunately this thing is not healthy you can see the coastline is insane we're talking about nutty that's a 50 mile island or so down at the bottom of Zeddy's Pass I don't know if it'll give us anything you can see how dangerous this gets there's 26,000 islands all together on this coast there's all these fjords and inlets we have a lot of protected water to crawl up through, we can come up through the inside, all the way up, and then shoot across to Queen Charlotte City over here and fuel up. We can take the ferry over to Queen Charlotte City, rather, and then we can go out each side of it. We can go out each side of it and scoot down to Graham or up above Graham. We have Masset up here. We can go up the Mass, drive up the Masset, and launch up there, right? And what we're talking about doing is not only Banks Island and Aristobal, Aristobal Island, Paris Island, Price Island. Now Price Island got all the beers on it, right? They have uh, beers that are born black and white, like when you see twins. It's a really unusual place. And we'll take the whole inside passage. I know it all inside out. I never dreamt for a second I'd be going back up the coastline. We're going to go cover the coastline of British Columbia. And once we do that, we'll seek permission. Oh, you bet, you bet it to head up into Alaska. And we're going to seek permission to keep going. If that's what it takes. I'm assuming that once we do Canada, that won't be an issue, right? But we want to go down and do America. I don't think they're going to let us come down. We need everybody to go to the beaches with their cameras at low tides. And see if it's dear too. And you can be sure it is. Because it's coming out for 130 days. 
and 129 days, every day behind that was another plume. It wasn't just one plume that wiped out the entire coastline, as we're going to about to find out. Unimaginable. But let me come back over to the wire cast for everybody. And let me come back over to the wire cast. And I'll tell you what I'm talking about. So you can kind of kind of get an idea. Wait now, I gotta go back to the wire cast one more time. Hang on, folks. And we're gonna do a short show tonight so people can watch the video without having to wait an hour. We haven't got that much further to go. And I'm just going to run you through what I'm trying to do, what we're going to do, and what our options are. And I got some pretty good options. And I'm going to show you the options I got. I think you'll think that I'm pretty brilliant taking the money and doing what I'm doing. And there's a, because we haven't got much, and we got to get the job done, right? We got to get that job done. And so $3,500 will give us a 16 foot hard bottom zodiac that can handle everything. And that's shocking we got to use something like that. It's terrible. The motor's probably no good. We're going to need a real motor. So we'll save the motor for a kicker. And then we'll get a, real, a brand new motor. Like it can only handle a 50 horsepower. There's another option for a thousand bucks. And it's got a 15 horsepower motor on it. And that don't sound like uh, I can accomplish much. But a 10 foot Zodiac. I would rather be on that on the open ocean in a 90 mile an hour wind than a 900 foot boat any day of the week. And tonight we got, we got, we can take phone calls for money bombs tonight. Hello folks. Hello. Hey, hey, we got Jeff on the go again, the original Punisher. Hi. Hey Jeff, we're, we're just starting the money bomb. And I know you were going to save your new one for tonight. Perfect timing then, Dana. Yeah, it's 12 yeah, minutes I in. A, I have another opportunity to no, donate a little bit more from the GP No Regrets Fund. We'll put another 500 in. Woo! Win, man. So that's 2,500 sure. you're talking about now, Jeff. That's amazing. Well, uh, I don't know the total, but it'll show up in the box there. Right, I hear you. Well, folks... Okay, I have for you today, sir. I hope it's working well. Yeah, well, like you say, uh, we found out Tofino has fallen, right, to it. So Tofino is the west coast of Vancouver right. Island, and that's like the worst news possible. And so, yeah, this is the real deal all of a sudden, folks. Okay, Jeff, we'll let you go. Anybody else wants to phone in, go ahead. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Peace and love. Bye. Bye-bye, Jeff. Bye, Jeff. And so we're looking at, we can afford all of this one here, no problem. We can afford $1,100 for that one. And it needs a 15 horsepower. These are hard bottom. These are really good boats. They're not big enough and safe enough, but they can do the job. This one for 5000 is 13 foot Avon, the Alpha Victor, Oscar, November. These things were $1,000 a foot when they were built. And there's a reason is because they're so good on the ocean. And so we have to launch people on shore and we have to go all on the coastline and get all the pictures in a short period of time. So we need speed, obviously, right? Now, ideally, we would be able to get our hands on something like that. That's 20000 Unfortunately, that's I don't imagine we're going to get the money for something like that. But that's what you need to do what we're going to do. Any sane person would do that. The other alternatives was something like a jet boat for 8000 But you're, you're dealing with your life. I don't know about stuff like that. This one here for 3500 was a good deal. Now this one for 1000 is probably what I'm going to end up with. And we'll put a brand new motor on it. It's 16 feet. It's got three holes. It'll kind of cost about 100 bucks a hole and it needs a trailer. We can probably pick one up for seven or 800 bucks. But at least we got something safe with that one there. So that, that's a, those are good types of options and we can definitely handle that. Now I'll come over and show you the option that we really we would like to be able to get our hands on because it makes more sense is sixty seven hundred dollars unfortunately that's a lot of money but if people out there really truly want to help us and want to go to bat and put an end to this you can you can see the phone numbers you can call them up and buy it and they can call us up and we'll go pick it up or we'll get a ship down 
at the same time, that's what we need is something like this to keep going, obviously. But don't make no mistake about it. What we got, I can get that 16-footer. And that's good enough, okay? We'll patch that up. That'll be fine. Those things are, are definitely good for another 30 years, even though it's all beat up. Now, we can only take a 50-horsepower motor on these things. And the 50-horsepower motors... Um, hang on a second, because... The, Hang on, we get the that working properly. I screwed up. And I'll get it. Hang on, folks. Let me see if I got it this time. Yeah, so the 50 horsepower motor is around 6000 and we have dealers here in town where you can you can purchase them if that should happen that somebody out there wants to go take the money themselves buy it themselves and give it to us because that is what we need we don't care how we get it we just care that we go that we get we also need at least and we you know one of these and we can afford to buy one of them as it is now but if somebody really wants to get us we need two of them and we need extra batteries and we need the cards and that's basically what we're working with now we need a microscope we need a we need a microscope to take samples and to be able to get the digital pictures that we can upload from all the spots that we go to and then when it's bad weather we can keep uploading samples and this is a 23 million pixel and I can pick it up at the source here in town at Powell River and so someone can phone the source pay for it Give them my phone number, they'll call me, and we can go pick it up. Right, so the money doesn't have to come on my hand, and this is the equipment that we that will tell that story. But you have to tell us that you're buying us one so other people don't buy them too, right? You have to give me a call at my phone number, 604-250, I'm sorry, 604-223-1075. And so anybody else who's going to buy it, phone me when you're going to spend this kind of money. If that happens, and I can tell you whether anybody bought it, and you can make up your mind based upon that and get back to me or whatever, but at least you know you would have an answer without actually going ahead and doing it first. So you would have that that particular opportunity. And I don't think I'm asking for very much, but I am asking, and I got no choice. And I come to you extremely humbled after watching that Tofino video. That is staggering. We want to go pick him up. We want to go pick him up. We want to go pick him up in this thing here and make him feel good and take him out. And anybody else that took the pictures, we want to come into those communities, grab him, bring him out, and get the rest of the story and bring him into it. And we'll come in at $1,000, 16-foot, with all the patches on it. Don't get me wrong. This is a one-time show. We're going to be leaving boots on the beaches. We're not taking them back aboard the boats. And we feel the same way about the equipment that we're putting in the water. After 60 days of dead life, the entire coastline, we're going to assume the worst. And if where we want to keep an operation going on this coastline, even after we're gone, so we're going to try to put cameras in the ocean, not that on anything that is there, and monitor it <coughs> in areas. And what we're looking at is an opportunity to go up and show the entire coastline is missing because this is what we done. You know, let me bring up that what map of uh, British Columbia, Canada. We dove everything. We dove all of that year after year, right? Week after week, month after month. I was up here in the Charlottes for 128 days because fisheries wouldn't let us go anywhere. We had to pick quotas up in Lane Gear of 300,000 pounds in the worst weather in March. Came in like a lion, went out like a lion, and took me with it. I spent a decade in the hospital bed in the last five years trying to sit up straight. And I, I educated myself in that period of time. And now I find that that knowledge and that experience and that ability that I have of spending my whole life on the ocean from childhood on up has set me perfect for a 60-day 
And like, I'm not healthy enough to do any of it. But if I got the equipment or not, I have to go. We can't, we can't not wait any longer, particularly after Tofino. When I watched that, I was broken hearted last night. And I'm not going to lie, that, that, that rocked me. That put me unconscious last night. That left me totally drained. I was reading another peer review study, trying to take my mind off it. And they were talking about how the buckyballs, the, the urethal peroxide hydrogen buckyballs from spraying the salt water on the reactors created these spherical balls that ingest atoms and particles. And they were, they were, they didn't salute into water. And but what the, and, and in farmland, but what they done was they stuck, they stuck to rocks and pebbles and everything else, and nothing could take hold there and live in proximity. And I would imagine that's what's going on on our coastline. Our coastline had a, a extinction event, and probably seventy five percent of the species, species at minimum at that time, were taken out. So what happened was we had a release, it came across the ocean in three days and it started to disperse and there was disposition all over the country. Everything on the west side of the, the Rocky Mountains washed it back down to the coastline and the buckyballs that are coming across, every after 130 days, every day behind that was a plume hitting our entire coastline and they hid it away from us. Now I'm not going to go down that road so much tonight because I could go into a fit. And I'm just trying to tell everybody what we're up against, what the story is, what the confirmations are. 200 kilometers, the ocean didn't recede it, and we need other people to go to those beaches and look at them so people can see somebody else was there. But right now we don't have that. And I'm willing to meet anybody that wants to go to these beaches. I'll take them if you can't find them. We'll take in the, one of these skiffs, one of these zodiacs, and these, are, these can do the job. By rates, we need twin 325 outboards, triple them on a great big boat, and we can zip. We need enough money to rent planes and photographers along the way so they can go where we're taking samples and on the beach, they can fly along the coastline for a few hours and give us the memory cards, and we'll upload that to the site. And while that is being uploaded, we can uh, take uh, pictures with the microscopes of the samples, and when we crash, we'll wake up and find ourselves at work and do it again for 60 days minimum. You can keep us going for a bit longer. We'll keep going if that's needed. And we're going to go all the way up past Prince Rupert. We're going to go all the way up. And we're going to go all the way up to uh, this place up here. What is it? I can't even remember. Well, we'll come all the way up. Right along between the American border. Right along that shoreline. Right along that divide. And yeah, we're not in America. But we're right on your coastline. We're only a few miles away from it. And if it's gone on that side, right, then it's gone on the other side too. I'll come back over to the Wirecast. So they might not let us in America. You okay, Zoe? Because they might not have no sea and enemies, which is what we have to assume until we find out different. Right? We have to assume that until we find out different. No, and we can zoom in on their land, right? It's not illegal to do that while we're going up there. Yeah? And so, that's what we need to do. And you guys have literally set us free. But what I'm telling you is what I need. What I showed you is what we, we should have. Minimum. We should have the ability to be safe. We should have the ability to have a brand new 9.9 .9 kicker, not an old beater. We should have a brand new motor on this thing. That doesn't mean it's going to work. We need another motor as a kicker. Someone can buy one motor here in Powell River. They can call me a 9.9 .9 or a 15. And somebody else, if they want to, I'm just saying, can buy a 50 Mercury, Marner, Evanru, Johnson, whatever turns your crank. And just look up Powell River, British Columbia. And if you guess, you know, they'll, they'll bring it right to my door. We can have the boat delivered right here. We can go down and pick it up. And we'll have enough by then. And by, say, Thursday of next week, and to go for 60 days. We're going anyway. We'll have at least a small 10-footer that will tow behind us right with what we got. We can do that, and we can go all the way with that. But what I'm asking for, and I'll show you a picture, is 6700 and that's a lot of money. But this is a huge issue, 
and you can see the numbers, you can call them, give them my number, and they'll call me. If that happens, right, that's a miracle on our side. Because we got, that's the real deal. We can mount spotlights up on it. We can get our sounders, our GPS on it, and stuff like that. And we really got something now. And we got something that can get us out of danger, and something that we can run up on a beach if there's an issue. And something where the motor is so small, we drop down our kicker and get out of the way because it's so light. But it's something that can do the job and go up against whatever Mother Nature can throw at us. And that's what we really need. And once again, you know, the cameras um, are at the source.ca. You can call them here in Powell River. We don't have to do nothing like that, right? We got enough coming in. And we'll give you the numbers as we get closer. And we, I never looked today at all, of course. We haven't stopped. I'm devastated. I'm utterly devastated still. And I don't think I'll ever get over it. That Tofino video. Poor quality camera. Never went down on the beach. Extremely adequate. He didn't go on the beach because he didn't have to. Because he's been there for 20 years. He's earned the ability and the respect to go there and say it. And somebody has to prove him wrong before anybody can say he's wrong. You have to go there with your cameras, take the pictures, you can't prove John is wrong, call him wrong, until you actually go there yourselves. And there's nine million tourists a year will tell you they went there to photograph the life. And John's telling you that we need everybody to go to the beaches at low tide, take pictures, tweet that out. There's no life there. It's really truly happening, folks. Then we can have a debate. Then we can plant G get rid of GMO off this planet and plant organic food throughout every community so people can start building up a resistance. And we can take 4,300 peer-reviewed academic studies every day and come up with solutions. That's not asking much. And we will get our way. Because we're not asking. We'll get our way because we're going to take it. The majority of us will rise up when this goes out. And not in panic, but in indignation that they done this to us. And that we gave them everything they ever wanted. Everything they could ever hope for. We gave them what don't exist no more. Besides the sea life. Is their pensions. Yeah. Ha ha ha. Well that's the fact folks. We, we really need for the budget around 5,000 a week for, sit, for 8 weeks. Because we need boats. We need motors. We need spear motors. We need amazing. That's a huge distance we got to go through. That's unimaginable tidal zones. Unimaginable dangers that we're talking about going up on that coastline let me tell you something i have the skill the experience the drive and the tenacious attitude to not be put off nobody will stop us nobody is going to stop us from every day loading this up that's that's a fact but what i have to do is come to you and tell you that we have to do this. I'm your vessel. We need that vessel. We need those motors. We need those cameras. We still haven't. We won't have any cash, I don't think, till probably Monday. And I'm saying we're going, but we are. Because we'll go without it and we'll get it after. Because we are going. And we could do it for a $1,000 boat and a $1,500 outboard motor, secondhand motor, and an old $700 kicker. You know, goodness grief. Goodness, goodness me, I don't imagine that is what it's going to take, right? I don't imagine you will let me do that, right? I don't see why the government won't give me something and say, go prove us wrong then. Why don't you give me one of the Coast Guard boats? You got nothing to do with it. There's nothing out there. Give me one of the fisheries boats. They got nothing to do with it. With twin 200s on the back of it and radars and sounders and my money in it already all over the coastline. Surely you can spear one of them. So we can get on with life. We'd rather bring you aboard than look back and say you wouldn't do nothing. You wouldn't even help us. That's what we're going to look back on. You have no idea how disgusted I am. Fuck. You can't believe you've done this to us.